This is Pico Beats. It's, it's based on the hardware by Zach Scholl called the Pico Core. It's uh, built around an RP2040 RP chip on a AliExpress board with 16 megs of flash on it. I'll link um, Zach's website in the description of the video, but um, this one is homemade. I, I built this one myself because it's a fairly simple board to build, but you can buy one completely built. Uh, you can buy a kit or you can buy a, a bare PCB from Zach. So check out his website. Also a lot more information on the Pico Core. Uh, the Pico Core is uh, kind of a glitch breakbeat type sample player. Uh, this one is something different. It's actually a kind of a rhythm machine. We have eight Euclidean sequencers and we can play loops or we can play um, individual drum hits or melodic uh, samples, whatever we want here. So it's written in Arduino for the uh, Pico uh, uh, 2040. Uh, you can download load that on the web. And um, so yeah, it's open source. Just download it from my GitHub and um, you can play around the code. I'll, I'll put some uh, pre-compiled images there. So uh, they're in UF2 format. So you can basically just download them, uh, install them the same way you would load an image on your uh, Pico Core uh, and you'll just get this new software for it. So I didn't base this on um, Zach's code at all. This is kind of written, this is all my code. Uh, a few little bits borrowed from here and there, but uh, mostly mine. Okay, so let's power it up from scratch here. When it boots up, it uh, shows you in binary the number of samples it's got loaded there. I couldn't read that quickly, but it's, uh, was it saying uh, 16 or 20 or so? And it starts up with a basic four on the floor pattern here. So if we turn the volume up a bit, this, this is an 808 uh, drum sample set. So the way we change our sample is we select a track. So we have eight tracks here. We select them uh, individually, or we can actually select two tracks at a time if we want. That isn't terribly useful most of the time, but might be. So we select the track, by, and we hold the button, turn the leftmost button to change the sample. So let's, now let's find a bass sample. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we've got a bass sample, basic four on the floor. Let's add a hat. So we'll uh, select the next track, play around until we... Oh, we've got to turn up the, the sequence here. This is the Euclidean fill. So each of the sequencers has uh, 16 steps, and you select the number of beats in the... In, in the uh, sequence with this knob, this selects, selects the uh, rotation or the offset, so it basically shifts the pattern back and forth. So this one, turn it clockwise to get more beats. There's fully loaded. There's off. And you can see as we rotate it, the rhythm changes. in sync now. Back clockwise, back in sync. Okay, let's find a more interesting sample here. Let's put a little more, a little more fill in it. There we go. Kind of a hat sound. That's a little loud. So we can adjust the volume of that. So our last selected track is this one. So I press the button, that's the last one we used. We hold this little user button, which is kind of a secondary function on the board. And we can just use this pot to adjust the volume. So it adjusts the volume relative to the other samples. Loud, soft. This volume works the same way as it does on the Pico Core. It's, it's, it's the overall volume. So let's add some more beats to it. Oh, it doesn't sound too bad. So 
Euclidean rhythms have a, have a particular sound. They all sort of sound kind of Latin-y to me. So the other thing we can do is um, you can sort of get melodies with this thing. So we have a couple of samples here which are a little bit pitched. So if I play around with this, let's get a very low fill here. There's a couple of samples that have different pitches. Those, those ones. Adjusted, I've selected a couple of drums which have different pitches that sound kind of similar. So, so now we've got a little bit of a melody going there. We can we fiddle around with the fills and the offsets. We can get to play slightly different melodies. So you can put on, again, whatever samples you want. So if you put piano samples in there, you can select different piano uh, notes and do the same sort of thing. You can get uh, a melody and some rhythm going with it. So you can get uh, a little bit of glitchy effects here if we um, sort of start It just, if we start playing around with the, uh, the offset, it occasionally throws in a few random bits. I forgot to set the BPM. So again, that's another shift function. So if we if we press this button here, user button, shift button, whatever, and uh, tweak this spot, we can change the BPM. And just like the Pico chord shows you the BPM, this is 50. That's, that's 305, I guess it is. When it's, so there's a decoder for this. It, it's, it's in binary, but there's a decoder on Zach's website that shows you how to interpret the BPM number. So there's an audio input um, that's automatically mixed to the output. Let's slow this down a little bit here. And uh, there's a clock input, or I'm not currently using the clock input. I don't really have a need for it, but somebody really wants it, I could probably implement that. I also have an implemented a clock output, which is on uh, the same jack here as the audio. So you can use this to sort of do ambient -y type things as well. In this case, I've got a couple of 120 BPM loops loaded, and it's triggering them, um, as you can see, in different sequences. So I'm getting drums and kalimba and stuff. So the trick here is just set a very low BPM and then just very low trigger rates. So I'll just quickly go through how you would load your own samples into uh, Pico Beats. Uh, I'm not going to go through installing Arduino and installing the RPI uh, 2040 package. Um, that's well documented on the web. The board that I'm using is called the VCC dash ground YD RP 2040. Um, that's the name of it on the back of the board here. If you look at it, that's the board. And that's, you probably can't read that, but that's what it says on the board. These are about, uh, I think I paid three or four bucks on this for this thing uh, from AliExpress. But if you buy Zach's borders kit, it'll come with that board or something very similar. So anyway, I've got the uh, PicoBeat sketch loaded in Arduino, and I'm just going to show how you prepare the samples. So uh, I have a whole bunch of um, subdirectories within my Arduino uh, 
sketch folder here. So if you download this from GitHub, it's going to have some of these sample stuff. You know, I'm not going to have, have a whole pile of samples because they take up a lot of space. Uh, but if you download that, install it in your Arduino directory, <clears throat> go to PicoBeats, um, you can create a new subdirectory. So I, this one is called, I just call it Kixbrood. It's just some samples I loaded off of uh, Sample Radar. So if we go in here, you can see there's a whole bunch of samples. And um, so what we'll go now, we want to convert those. Pardon me, we'll go back to, we'll go to resources. And there's a utility in here called Wave to Header. It's based on a um, some code that I found that Paul Stoffergen wrote. Uh, Paul's the, uh, the Teensy guy. So I modified it to uh, convert WAV files to, um, instead of just plain headers, it uh, resamples them and it creates the headers specifically for this, um, this program or this format that I'm using. So uh, PicoBeats, I've tested it a little bit at 44 killers. It actually does work. Um, I haven't done a lot of testing. Um, I believe I'm still just running, uh, not even overclocking. Yeah, it's running 133 megahertz. So um, I'm not even overclocking and it does quite quite nicely at uh, 22 kilohertz and I th might even work at well, 44. Anyway, if we um, go back to this folder, we'll grab a copy of Wave to Header 22 kilohertz. This is the, the utility that converts the samples into the correct format. So we'll copy it. We'll go back to our folder we were working on here, which was Kixbrute. Dump it in here. So now we just run the utility. I'm, I'm running Windows. Um, if you're running Linux or Mac OS, you can just recompile this utility. It's, it's just straight C code uh, and do the same thing. So we run it. It's uh, going to munge all those samples. And it's now converted them to a bunch of uh, header files. So it's taken each sample, uh, converted it into a header that C can compile. And there's two other files in here that it creates. One is called samplefs.h. Let's take a real quick look at that. So samplefs is basically an array of structures that describe the samples. So it basically has there's stuff in here that we're not using in this particular app. It was it was written a couple years ago for something else that I did. But the main thing it does, it tells you, it gives you a pointer to where the sample is and tells you how big the sample is in, in terms of uh, you know how many 16-bit um, samples are in. And then the other file it creates is called sample or samples.h, which basically includes all the sample headers, and at the end of it includes sample depths. So it basically gloms all this stuff together so we can access it from the main program. So now what we do is go to our sketch and you'll see in about the middle of the sketch there's a thing, there's a whole bunch of includes on it. So I think I already did this one, I did. So we'll comment out 808 samples and we'll uncomment or you can add your own directory if you want. Uh, Kixbrute and then we just compile it and it'll upload to uh, your Pico if it's plugged in. Or you can just generate a UF2 file. If you go sketch um, export compiled binary, it will generate in the build subdirectory, it'll generate a binary and then you can drag and drop it uh, if you want to use that. So um, I find for this app, um, you want typically you want relatively short samples, so single percussive hits work very well, but loops you can use but they may not be as useful as single percussive hits because it's basically it's a rhythm machine. So that's uh, basically how you create your own custom version of uh, a sample pack for uh, PicoBeats.